Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies and we're here today to look at the new bow from Slandia Archery, which is a Chinese company. It's called the, I hope it's called the Emperor. Um, these are just new out. Uh, machine riser. These are a compressed limb. They're in the American limbs. It's got a unique cam system. It's a twin cam, so same cam top and bottom. It's a rotating module. So up here, it goes from 23.5 inches to 30 inches in draw length. It has a draw stop that just there. And it also has the same down the bottom. So whatever you do at the top, you do to the bottom. So if you're adjusting the draw length at the top, you adjust it down the bottom as well. Now with the twin cam system, if the bow is out of time, so if these cam cables are different lengths, you'll get a rocking motion. So that's different to a hybrid cam or single cam. Um, the twin cams tend to be a little bit faster and they tend to be uh, a little bit smoother to draw if they're in time. Now the limb bolts here, um, they've got heaps and heaps of limb adjustment. The bow is adjustable from, this bow says it's adjustable from 50 to 30 pounds and they also do a 60 pound model. Um, this bow comes in a kit and the retail price is around $480. It comes with um, 5 pin sight. Um, little hostage arrow rest there, three, three prong um, rest, it has a string stop, an angled cable guard so it reduces the torque on the strings which reduces the cam lean. Um, it also, if you, if you have a, a straight cable guard, as you draw it back, basically it tries to pull these strings off the tracks of the bow so you get cam wear. Um, with the cable guard pointing inwards it reduces that pressure on the strings running into these grooves on the cams. Um, so the angled cable guard is generally seen on more expensive bows. This is a nice system it's built into the riser here. Very simple basically won't cause you any problems. String stock cable guard it also comes with a comes with a like a release aid like a mongoose from Scott but it's obviously not. It's got a rotating rotating head and it's adjustable there so you can change the length of it by moving that little bolt and basically it extends the head it all comes with it comes with six arrows now the ar arrows are pretty average or very average um, so they're not worth a lot it comes with wax um, which is really really handy um, because when you shoot your bow your strings will dry out and then they'll fray and then they've got to be replaced comes with allen keys, two sets of allen keys to fix your bow. Now some quick things about this, the module draw length adjustment, you don't need a bow press to work on this. There is no part of the strings and cables touching the module. So basically all you do is adjust it, there's one allen key, which is just in there, and you basically move it to another number. Now the key to adjusting modules, if you want it longer, making the module longer, so moving it, making it a bigger module, increases the draw length, making the module smaller, reduces the draw length. Um, now the downsides, the D-loop that came with it wasn't very good so I've replaced it. This peep sight here tends to be not very good to look through so I would replace this. Um, but overall the bow to me is a nice looking bow, limb pockets are metal. Um, Salandia so is giving a one year warranty on their compound bows, which is different to the Americans, which could be lifetime. But to me overall, this is a good quality bow. They feature the American limbs from Gordon Glass on them. And once we wind this bow down, you'll see they'll get a fair bit of compression on the limbs. It's about a 30 inch axle axle bow. Um, now this company makes lots of archery equipment for lots of companies. Um, they're only really kind of new into the compound bows, but they say they make them for other American companies and they will make bows for you if you want them to be made for you specifically, um, which I don't do. I'm just basically looking at a product. Now, why would I be interested in this bow for me as a retailer and for you as a customer? Well, the major reason is lots of people who are getting the sport of archery want an affordable bow. They're not interested in an expensive bow. Now, all up in a kit, this is 480, so it's pretty affordable. It's not not cheap stuff, but it's not the American product. So, let's just compare this to other bows, and then we'll compare the way it shoots and all the rest of it. So, your other Chinese product. <coughs> 
This is another Chinese bow. This is a cast riser and obviously the limbs are pretty basic and the cams are very basic. There's no draw stop. Now this bow will sell for around 180 odd dollars. Um, they're pretty common. It's a compound bow. Like it's got quite decent draw length adjustment from 31 to 22. But this, you can see the angle on the limbs, completely different. These are two different beasts. That bow's about 180. This one set up is 460. So you're going to say that probably the bow's around the three, th worth around $300. Now the other bows that it would compete against, this is the bow from Toe, toe Point. Um, very similar limbs. Um, it doesn't have a draw stop on it. This is the T1. Um, machined riser, limbs are good. Um, and I've done a review on this bow. This bow retails for around 400. So the Slandia bow, um, the Emperor, I'm pretty sure this is called, um, to me looks like a better bow than this. Now, that's a debatable point and we haven't shot them both. But I do like the fact it's got draw stops. Um, they both have lots of adjustment. I do like the cable guard that moves in and this comes as a full kit so price point wise to me without shooting the bow and feeling the bow and all the rest of it to me this looks like pretty good value so that's why I'm, why I'm kind of interested in it to start with this is the American product this is the stinger now this is my biggest selling bow um, this bow sells for $500 as a bare bow so basically with the Chinese product you're getting a whole kit for a, under the price of the PSE Stinger. Now the PSE Stinger is one lighter. It's um, 3.5, 3 3.4 pounds in mass weight. So it's physically lighter. It's a cast riser versus the machined riser of the um, Salandia. Um, the limbs are pretty much the same, but the PSE product features a lifetime warranty. It's a single cam. So you've got an idler at the top. It's got a um, string stop down the bottom. The adjustable panage on the Stinger is 20 pounds. The draw length is adjustable from 23 to about 30 inches in draw length. So to me the Stinger is a, is a better product than the Chinese product. Now is it a better bow? Now we're going to sort of work that out but it is nice to have the backup of a lifetime warranty. Like if these limbs were to go they get replaced. Um, if you have a problem, the Stinger has been tested for 25 years of shooting. You know, it's it's a reason it's the biggest selling bow in the world. Um, it's just a product. I sell about 700 Stingers a year, and touch wood, I haven't had any come back. And I probably have had one come back. I just can't remember it. But 700 a year, every year that's been on the market. You know, they they change it every year a little bit, but largely un unaltered um, it's just a bulletproof product you know if you buy a 70 pound bow it's 50 to 70 pound you know it's going to weigh 70 pound and you'll know if you watch the toe point video I did the 60 pound bow wouldn't make, make 60 pounds so to me the stinger the stinger is your premium product at a beginner level fully set up that bow is going to be 660 so it's about $200 more than this bow here. Now this bow has some features that the Stinger doesn't have. It doesn't have the angle cable guard. But now we've got to see is this bow comparable to it and that way you can then say well what's the warranty worth? Now for me when I first spoke with this company warranty is is critical for me because when people break their bows through dry fires and derailing and yes I know you do dry fire your bow and you derail your bow basically you're going to ring up and say look my dad dry fired my bow or basically I don't know I dry fired my bow and it's a warranty claim and I need to have the parts available for you um, now with PSE I don't have any issues um, when I say I don't have any issues they are very very quick to get replacements parts to my shop and for me then to get them out to the customers it's a quick process a painless process um, and I sell thousands of those bows a year. So what I did with, when I brought this bow into the country 
is I got replacement limbs, I got replacement cams, I got replacement strings. So that way if someone were, was to break their limbs or to break their cams through derailing and dry firing, um, I do have replacement parts. Now the limbs for this bow, and I'm going to get these numbers wrong because I haven't priced them out yet. Bullpark, let's just say around $80, $80 a set, they may be $100 a set. Right? The PSE to replace stings, um, limbs on a stinger, you're looking around $200 a set. The cams for the Solandio, if you dry fire your bow, derail your bow. Once again, I'm guessing numbers. I think they're about $75 each on a PSE or a Matthews. You're up in about the $100 per cam. Uh, Matthews a little bit more expensive. Hoyt up in the you know $250 a cam. So for a set, around $500. Your PSE is around $200. Matthews around $280. Australian dollars around that sort of price so the Chinese products are a lot lot cheaper now they said Slandia said these are a 7000 series cam and they said it can handle five dry fires without breaking don't do it please don't do it um, because it's just like why would you want to and most of most dry fires are a mistake um, person forgets to load the arrow first time buy the bow pull it back let go so Okay, so enough on dry firing your bow and derailing your bow. The grip on this is quite nice. It's quite a narrow grip. It's very much like a Matthews designed grip. Um, very square and it feels very much like the toe point grip and the Matthews chill grips. Um, so let's just have a try and see what this feels like and then we'll wind the bow, bow up. So I'm just going to shoot my release aid. Now I haven't I haven't sighted this bow in, so we're just going to draw it back. Now, to start off with, it's smooth, 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 smooth. Basically, I can't feel, in this distance here, I can't feel any difference in the bow poundage. It feels, it feels the same the, right the way through. But this bow is different because it's like you get two lumps in the draw cycle so here and then suddenly it feels a bit easier and then it starts to peak a little bit more and then valley now when you get in this valley i don't know what the let off is but honestly yeah just it's got to be in the 90 percent let off because you get back there and you're holding absolutely zero which for a beginner would sound good because you you've got back there and it's like oh i'm holding nothing i can aim all day and yes you can but if you make a minor adjustment here a minor if you do something minor in this when you're holding the release aid it has a big impact downstream so while high let off sounds good um there are some negative components of it now you could replace you could change that by basically moving your draw stop forward um so basically hitting the draw stop earlier in the valley um but overall, like it feels really, really comfortable to draw. So we're just going to take this shot. Now the peep sight, as I probably mentioned, not liking because it doesn't come back straight. You can see through it. I've got no idea where the arrow's going to go. So let's hope it doesn't explode because they are $20 arrows. Felt pretty good. Um, there was no shock there and obviously this is wound down so I'm going to wind the bow up but it felt good like overall the draw cycle smooth to draw easy to adjust the draw length um, I'm going to wind it up it shot it shot well um, there was no shock as there shouldn't be because these limbs are parallel the bow weight itself to me feels like it feels like about a four pound bow it doesn't feel heavy and maybe under a four pound bow but it's pretty equivalent to the uh, mission craze in weight the bear cruiser i would say the psc stinger is lighter the stinger is like 3.4 it's definitely heavier than the stinger but similar to the craze and the bear cruiser which are both popular bows now i've wound this bow fully down you can see the tension on the limbs has increased 
Um, so that's putting more tension on the strings and cables here. And let's shoot another shot. Oh, put my hand through the wrist sling. Now my bow I found didn't move anywhere when I when I basically shot it. There was no vibration. Now this is at 50. When you get back to that valley, there's just zero there. Now the draw cycle is different to a normal bow. And you're gonna say, is it better or worse? It's different. It's, the double peak is a bit, you get used to it and you probably wouldn't notice it. It's very smooth, it almost feels like and if you've shot some other bows out there, um, the Obsession, there was another company called Steve's Archery, um, which had cams like this. It feels very much the same. And it could be they are the same cams, but it feels very much the same. So... The bow overall is quiet to shoot. So in many ways, the bow feels like a more expensive bow. Um, it comes in a few colors. Um, the company, this is their black with some sort of camo through it. It comes in a snow color. I think it also comes in camo. Yeah, so see there it peaks and then it's like, it's almost like a two-part process in the draw cycle. So I find the draw cycle a little bit off-putting, but as a beginner's bow, you wouldn't even notice it. And it's not a bad draw cycle because it does have the draw stop at the end and it's the kind of it kind of peaks there and then it gets easy and then it's like peaking again, so... Feels alright. Um, the arrows are touching down there. Like, I like it. So what we're going to do is we'll take this back to 18 metres now. Um, and we'll do the 18 metre sort of test with it. And then I'll hopefully be able to run outside if it's not too dark and run it through a speed machine. I don't think this will be blazing speeds. They do publish a speed on this bow. Oh, so they do publish speeds on this bow. They so they claim it's 80 percent, 3.7 pounds, and there was a speed thing I saw somewhere on the bow. It wasn't blazing speeds. I think they rated it 320, which is about the same sort of speed as a Stinger. Um, but it feels like it's going well, so so let's go and have a shot at 18. Okay, Doug, we're back at 18 meters. Um, this is my upstairs shooting range. So let's just see. Once again, I haven't sighted this bow in, so all I'm looking for is groups down the other end. The bow's at 50 pounds. The drawing's a little bit short for me. You'll see as I draw the bow back, I try and draw back bows pretty slowly. And you'll see I get a fair bit of movement with my hand as I'm drawing. And that's to do with the draw, draw cycle. <clears throat> so the whole time I'm trying to aim the bow at the target. Yeah, so the whole time I'm trying to aim the pin at the gold. Um, so if the draw cycle is not very smooth, basically you you will move around a bit more during that process. Um, but it just gives you a...
Now I can barely see through the peep sight. The peep sight's just not lining up at all for me. Overall, both feels the felt both feels pretty good. It does feel like a more expensive bow. And you could easily argue the point that this bow feels better than the Stinger to shoot. But it doesn't have the backup service of the PSE. Now with new bows, for me, I've always, well I've sold archery gear for a long time, but with new bows you've always got to be wary about what this bow is going to be like in three, four, six months, a year's time. There was one bow company I used to sell and they had a lot of failures and I had people getting hurt. Um, it's a major bow company, it's one of the big bow companies, um, it's obviously not PSE and I, know, uh, I now no longer deal with that company. Um, they just didn't test their stuff well before they released it um, and people got hurt um, and I had basically 50% at least 50% failure rate of their product All right, we'll just take the camera down there so we can see where these arrows landed. Okay, so we're up close to the target now. And these are the arrows. Um, now I would say the peep sight doesn't help because it, some shots I basically couldn't see. Basically my group, I've got the one odd one out here. My group is a little bit bigger than my sort of fingers. Yesterday, yesterday, two days ago, I did the Phenom, uh, PSE Phenom group. The Phenom group is clearly better than this. Um, but the Phenom um, is a 36 inch axle axle bow with a hybrid cam system. So an easier bow to shoot. Um, the gear on it, the peep sight clearly didn't help me. The bow felt easy enough to shoot. Like, if I move my sights, most of those arrows would be in the gold, and that would be for a hunting setup, which was what this is. That's actually not a bad little group. Um, would I shoot better with the Stinger? I think it would be pretty similar. So, even other bows I've shot in some other reviews, I think that group's pretty consistent. Um, so, overall, the way this bow shoots, I'm pretty comfortable with the way the bow shoots. Um, the draw cycle's a little bit. It's comfortable and easy and smooth, but the little double bump things are a little bit off-putting, but you do get used to it, so you probably won't even notice it after you're shooting it. But overall, it's not a bad thing. So, quick summary, the limbs are good. So, out of all the beginner's bows, got good limbs. The cams are actually pretty good with the draw stops. Easy to adjust, simple. It's got good features with the cable guard, um, good materials. They claim 7,000 series cams, which is really, really good. That makes them really strong. Um, and the parts are pretty affordable, but you do run that risk if it's an unknown product that, you know, if I do have a problem, what will happen in the future with it? But overall, its price point is pretty, pretty good. So we'll just take this outside now and run it through a speed machine and I will show you the other colored one that camouflage um, so it's the same bow and it comes in a white camouflage and this camouflage you'll see in a lot of the Chinese products that are getting released they'll have the white camouflage in sights in RRS now in quivers and to me it's a pretty cool camouflage I really like it um, and as you know with animals they see in black and white so all you've got to do is cut these edges um, there's probably a little bit too much white and not enough dark to break those edges effectively but it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool looking camo I like it I'd go for the white over the black um, but I can see the black being more outselling the white because people like the 
darker colors but still it's a pretty good little product I really like it um, and I do hope that this product sort of stays together and in six months time you can say this is a good product because to me seeing the bow the weight of the bow overall the strings the strings look like they're made well um, braided serving I don't see much so I don't see any issues with the strings um, so we've shot now with this bow let's say 30 arrows there's no sign of wear on there um, and that's the wear point there um, if there's going to be where it's going to be there or it's going to be around the string around here but I don't see any sign of wear um, it all looks pretty good and that's about I don't know 30 arrows being shot and yeah it's not many arrows but it all looks good at this stage it is served through the cable guard um, to stop wear around the cable guard too but yeah, we'll take it outside now and shoot it through chronograph and see what sort of speeds we get out of it. Thank you. Inside to shoot the Slandia Emperor to run it through a speed machine. We've got it set at about 50 pounds, um, probably somewhere around 27 and a half inch draw length. So it's not as big a draw length. So it's probably not a fair comparison, but the a IBO on this is 320, which is the same as the Stinger. Um, so we're just going to put it through the speed machine. Chronograph. And so see what speeds we're going to get. That one's 271. I have I did shoot two before and they were 255, so I'm guessing that one's not correct. Two fifty six. So I, sh I shot four arrows. I've got two fifty five, two fifty six, two fifty five, two seventy one. So it's a two fifty five bow. Um, and given it's at fifty pounds and not the sixties where I normally test them at, and draw length is shorter, I think it's about a fair IBO speed. So it is comparable to the Stinger. Um, so some quick things about this that we've already haven't run through. The cams have roller bearings up here in the system. So I'm not sure if you can see them. I'll try and jump up there just there so it's a complete uh, bearing system which is what you see on the top end bows so that's pretty good overall I like the bow um, the weights good the adjustments good for a beginner um, you know like I've sort of said before you just got to be wary of a new product make sure it's going to be okay I would have no issue shooting this bow at all I have no issue buying it um, because I think it's a nice product. I think the quality of the build's good. They haven't aimed at the bottom end of the market. They've aimed at sort of top end um, products and their other bows are actually aimed at the American top end products. So, and their other bows are basically very, very similar to this. But overall, I like, I like the bow. I like the product. Um, so you just got to bear that in mind when you go to buy the bow whether you spend more money for the American product or if you are out of the ballpark of the American product which Chinese product you buy but as far as the Chinese products go this is a top end Chinese product it's not bottom end Chinese it's got better it's got good limbs past parallel or parallel limbs which are compression limbs with draw stops which is generally not featured by the other Chinese products on the market so I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. That's the Emperor Bow from Slandia in China. Um, nice little product. Um, they do some good little accessories too, so check them out. Thank you, bye.